Falling is an accident. Getting up is a choice. Hey guys, Dr. Naeem Sadiq, neurologist, director and founder of Plexus Neuro and Stem Cell Research Center. Today, I'm going to talk to you about spinal cord injury. Well, you must have heard of this famous quote, falling is an accident, getting up is a choice. There are so many, so many people, so many people around the world who suffer from this disease wherein they suffer from spinal cord injury because of which they either are unable to walk, stand or unable to move all their four limbs. But then, do you want to remain like that or do you want to get up, stand on your feet, walk, use your hands and come back to your normal life the way you were before you sustained this injury? That is what I'm going to talk to you in today's session. What is the spinal cord? What does it comprise of? What are the different segments there? What's the, you know, some simple anatomy of that? And then what the causes of spinal cord injury and when it happens, what are the symptoms? What are the uh, uh, problems with which a patient suffers? And what are the conventional types of treatment? And what do I have to offer wherein I can give you back your normal life and I can help you rise again and not only get up, but yes, stand, walk and maybe run also. Now here I have the diagram which explains the structure. Now this is, this is the diagram of, you know, that's the face. This is where the brain is. That's the skull here which contains the brain and this is the spine or the vertebral column. Now, if you look at the spine, it is divided into different segments. The top portion is the cervical region, which is the neck region. Then you have something colored in red. That is the thoracic, which is the upper back or the chest region. And then you have the green here, which is a lumbar, which is a lower back, and then the sacral and the coccygeal. Now, that is a vertebral column. It is a bony cage where different vertebrae, one after the other, the different numbers, which are assembled together to form the entire backbone or the vertebral column or the spine, which the, the words can be used interchangeably. Now, within this, passes the spinal cord. It is passing inside the cage, something like this. It's connected to the brain. And through the small holes on the sides of the vertebrae, exit the nerves. Okay, you have the cervical spinal nerves, the thoracic, the lumbar, and the sacral nerves. The cervical nerves control the neck region and below the head, the neck and the upper limb muscles, which is the both the hands. Then you have the thoracic, which control the chest and abdominal muscles. And then you have the lumbar, which controls the leg muscles. If you remember my previous presentations where I've been talking in almost in all, in every presentation, the signal arises from the brain. Now I have to move this hand. The signal comes from the brain and it passes to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord, it goes to the spinal nerves. And then I'm able to do this. Something similar to, if you can imagine an electrical connection. Now you have the main fuse box outside from the electricity pole or whatever transformer, the power supply comes to the main fuse. You know, from that it goes to the different wires and these wires are connected to the TV, the bulb, the fridge, the micro and so many appliances at home. Suppose the wire which is going to the micro is cut. 
Suppose the wire going to the fridge is cut, then the power supply from the main is there. The power is coming from the fuse till the wire. But from that wire to that appliance, it's not there because of which that appliance will not be working. Similarly, suppose there is an injury at different region to which I will come to in a little while. Depending on where the injury is, the patient will be presenting with those symptoms. What are the causes of spinal cord injury? Well, there are a lot of causes, there are a lot of classifications, but I don't want to go into any technical aspect. For you to understand in very simple language, the commonest cause with which we get hundreds and thousands of patients every single day is accident. Accident could be a road traffic accident, a motor vehicle accident, wherein you know person driving crashes, or a person going on a bike and crashes, or it could be accidental fall, you know, fall from a roof, fall from the floor, you know, fall while cleaning, you know, there, there could be any type of fall. And the other common cause with which I have had several cases is a gunshot injury. So these are the common causes where you have either an, it, it's an accident, a vehicle accident or an accidental fall or a gunshot injury. Again, depending on where, at which region the injury happens, the symptoms will, uh, the patient will present with those uh, features. For example, now if somebody has an injury in the neck region, in a cervical region, then you can imagine everything below this, depending, you know, suppose the injury is here. So that's the brain, that's the skull, so that the injury is here. So everything below this will be paralyzed wherein the patient will not be able to move his both his hands, the trunk, the chest and the legs. So that is known as quadriplegia where all four limbs are paralyzed. Now it could be a complete injury or an incomplete injury. A complete injury is where there is nothing working below that point. Incomplete injury, there are some muscles which are working but majority of the muscles are not working. Now it could be not only the movement, wherein the person is unable to move the hands and legs, but also the sensation. You know, the sensory pathways will be cut off. The patient will not be able to feel the temperature, whether it's hot or cold. The patient will not be able to feel the touch, whether it is a fine touch or a crude touch. And also, the patient will also have problem in his sphincters. By sphincters, I mean urine and motion. Patient may either not feel the filling of the bladder and to pass the motion, he may have to use a suppository one or an enema once in three, four days or whatever, or he might have to put a catheter or a tube to empty his bladder. Okay. Suppose the injury as is at a lower level, say somewhere mid thoracic, you know, somewhere in the thoracic. So here you can see that this portion is spared. The patient can move his limbs, you know, he can use his fingers, he can hold a spoon, he can eat and whatever. But from chest below, the sensation would have gone and his movement will also be affected. He will not be able to sit without support, without balance, his trunk will be unsupported and his legs will be completely paralyzed. Suppose the injury is at a lumbar level or a much, much lower level, then the tongue might be stable. The patient is able to sit without support. The patient is able to turn and move. The patient is able to raise his hands, hold things in his fingers, eat and do whatever. But the legs are paralyzed. He will not be able to move his legs, get up and stand on his own legs and walk. Similarly, the sensations also will be affected beneath or below that level. So what is important is the level of the injury, number one. And number two, the type of injury. Is it a complete spinal cord injury or an incomplete spinal cord injury? Now, what happens once, once somebody suffers from this? He's rushed to, an, rushed to a hospital immediately. He's kept in a very stable position. He's immobilized. And once he reaches the hospital, the first thing would be a scan would be done, an MRI or a CT uh, spine would be done to see what is the level of the injury, what is the type of injury, Plus, you know, is there any vertebral fra fracture, you know, has, has this broken? So if that is so, 
then the first thing would be the surgeon would stabilize that you know fix the vertebrae you know the fixation would carry on where the cage is restored you know what was broken that is restored and then conventionally what has been happening all these years was after the surgery is done the patient is put into rehabilitation or physiotherapy wherein days pass weeks pass months pass and years pass the patient is undergoing physiotherapy moving trying to do all kinds of things but then the patient may get 5% 7% 10% improvement or whatsoever but beyond that nothing else would happen and then the only uh, resort would be to use robotic limbs or to use robotic wheelchairs motorized wheelchairs and you know to resort to uh, technology but in the last few decades the advent of spinal uh, the stem cells and use of stem cell therapy in spinal cord injury has revolutionized the treatment at plexus we do stem cell therapy and we do regenerative rehabilitation we have had thousands of patients starting from cervical to thoracic to lumbar every kind of injury patients who have come to us as early as 4 days after injury and as late as 28 years after injury where there was only skin and bone and a few muscle fibers and we have done spinal stem cell therapy along with that we have a specialized customized rehabilitation program for patients with spinal cord injury and with this combination majority majority of our patients have improved and there are so many patients who are now back on their feet and they are able to walk now what is the concept behind this you know it it's it's very simple you know that the spinal cord is damaged you know at this at this region it is damaged below this level you know the nerves are not transmitting the signals at all so just by doing physiotherapy mobilizing the limbs this can prevent the contractures the limbs will not become too stiff and they will remain supple but then by injecting stem cells we can think of and can see and achieve union of that part so that the signals can resume to pass below the level of injury and that's exactly what has been happening the duration depends on the injury the level of the injury and the duration of the injury anywhere between 2 months to 6 months is what we need for the patient to recover completely if a patient has you know injury of say for 10 year old injury or 9 year old injury in 2 months he would any he would improve anywhere between 30 to 50% majority of patients who have come to us here we have been able to make him stand on his own feet get up on his own holding a walker in 2 months time if the patient is suffering from a thoracic injury if a patient is suffering from a cervical injury we have taken around 4 months time for the patient to start using his hands in fact we have had so many patients who have done drawings and gone for us we have had patients who have been able to eat noodles with their holding a you know the the bowl of noodles and then take a fork there twirl the noodles and eat on their own this we have been able to achieve in about 3 and 1/2 to 4 months so it is the duration of the injury and the duration of treatment maximum in the worst case scenario we would be requiring about 4 to 6 months time but yes all these patients we have given them back their legs we have given them back their hands in short we have given them back a new lease of life so guys that was an attempt to explain to you what is spinal cord injury how does it happen and when it happens what are the different uh, manifestations with which the patients come to us and when they come to plexus what is the special type of treatment which i have been giving here for the last 7 uh, to 8 years and what are the results there so if you know anybody who suffering from spinal cord injury who is bedridden 
and and once once the patient becomes bedridden, the the further complications, the bed sores, the septicemia, you know, and plus the depression, the psychological factors. So if you know anybody, convey this message to them. I'm here. Yes, they have fallen by an accident, but I'm here to help them get up. I'm here to help them rise. I'm here to help them stand on their own feet, use their hands, walk, and maybe run also. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, feel free to ask me. Post me on my mail, post me on social, post them on social media, WhatsApp me or visit me in person. And follow us on our social media where we will be updating you and I'll be coming soon to you with another presentation on it, another dreaded incurable disease. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you.